I've kind of lived all over the place and what brought me Charlotte was the school. I came here for grad school. Uh, I visited several other grad schools um, that have design programs and Charlotte had the best resources for the type of work that I was interested in. The duration of the program is only a year. It's a very well thought out program. Despite it being very short, everything is very intense. And that's what I like. Everything's not really drawn out. And another thing, you're not just talking about the basics. You are investigating all the, all the aspects of urban design. The first project that we worked on here was actually in South End, and we spent a lot of time just learning what it meant to really do an urban analysis of an area and talking to people about what they would like to see in the area. We're not a top heavy planning, sitting in a room with other people we think are brilliant, deciding for everyone else what should be the case. We're out on the street talking to people and experiencing things as they experience and, and seeing how they want to live. And I think that that was a really good foundation for us. So when we went to Boston, we did a, a project in Boston South End and the same principles applied there and we just got back from China, completely different context, but it's still the same principles just exploded because you have such density. Planning at the human scale is what's important even when you're dealing with the macro development. We all should probably agree that we want our the places that we live and work to continue to evolve to something better. Nobody, I think, if you ask around the world, would want their place to decline into uh, something not as good as it once was. So to pull it all together into one effort and this, you know, force and academia here uh, is helping out with that. I would go into urban design to make me a better architect, to make me more sensitive to community issues. But now that I see um, what urban design encompasses, I know that it can't just be a side thing. It has to be a more focused part of my career. I'm not sure where it's going to take me. I really want to find a way to merge these two different experiences. Something else that led me to come to this program was the, um, the international um, study abroad experience that it um, included. And so we spent uh, six weeks in China, um, traveling throughout from um, Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and uh, Suzhou. And we collaborated with some students there on a project. And so this is our final semester and we've continued to um, develop that project. And so their urban design and architecture practices are are different and some of them are, are really different than what we are used to here in the U.S. It was a great experience learnt, um, working with the Chinese students and being able to collaborate with them and that's something that will really help us in the job market later in the future I think. The program here is really cool because since we're uptown we're in the midst of everything so all of the professionals that are actually in urban design and doing what we're aspiring to do are right at our back door and we get the opportunity to be involved with them a lot. Charlotte is, if you know where to look, the streets are always buzzing with activity and being positioned here, especially in the Center City building and not on campus, you really get a first-hand feel for what you're trying to do. So I'm in school and I'm learning, but it's almost like I'm practicing at the same time already. You look right out the window and you can see all these great examples of streets and architecture and you can look on the other side of that and see uptown, you see skyscrapers and a light rail passing through, um, which is another great addition to this building is a light rail. Um, it's a great asset for Charlotte. It goes right by this building. The building was sited expertly. As an urban campus, I mean, it's, it's the epitome of urbanism. What's great about What's great about this building actually is that it's uptown and we're, we're located around a bunch of services and, and food and things like that. Um, you know, whenever you're in the studio and you're working on a weekend night, it's always nice to look out the window and see the life happening downtown. The lights, the people out, you can hear the, 
you know, you can hear the bass from the cars and, and things like that. It's really, uh, it's really nice to see that type of vitality. For me, I live in South End, and that's actually where the program used to be located. I love living there, and I can actually take the light rail to school. What's great about the light rail is that it's going to be um, extended to the university. So for me, I'm a dual degree student, and you know, five years from now, if the light rail was developed, I would be able to go back and forth between the main campus to this campus on light rail. So um, that's going to be a great feature. Charlotte's got great bike facilities. Um, I, I'm a cyclist, so that I'm able to ride quite easily to the studio. You know, Charlotte's a very safe city. So I know with the Master of Urban Design program, the School of Architecture has put in a lot of um, resources lately. Every student has their own monitor on their desk. We are allowed to just kind of spread out wherever we need to. We have a whole floor for ourselves. So whatever room we need to go to, it's always vacant, it's always available. We have this resource center that I'm in right now, which is wonderful. It has a lot of books. We have otters that are open all day here. We even have a little kitchen area. We have great views of Uptown Charlotte. We have parking that's very close to the building. We have 24-hour security. So even when you have to pull an all-nighter, you don't feel alone, I guess. And I'm excited that this building's here and I wish I was here in five years to see it happen. We have lots of folks from architecture and landscape architecture backgrounds. There's a smaller percentage of us, like myself, from non-design backgrounds. I really honestly have to say that the diversity is amazing. It must have been in the course of a couple of days, all of a sudden we were all hanging out and all sitting at each other's desks. And since then it's been nothing but establishing solid friendships and leaning on each other's shoulders and staying up late at night or meeting each other's significant others, going to you know, someone's house for dinner or throwing you know, casual backyard get-togethers. And it's been, it's been amazing. And we, we do all come from different backgrounds, different nationalities, you know, it's, it's all over the place and that's really rewarding to experience that. I feel like I've uh, I found some lifelong friends in the program. My peers here, um, again, they all come from different backgrounds. I think the way we fit in is that we get to see multiple perspectives about approaching uh, urban problem solving. Each of them are extremely professional. The, the backgrounds are, you know, art or, of course, landscape architecture. We have architects, we have urban planners, we have interior designers, we have people with no design background, no business background. So, I mean, there's it's extreme variety and they all bring this amazing clarity to projects because as a designer, we're always approaching it from a conceptual level or a design level or a planning level. You know, they bring a kind of a level of understanding and reality that uh, we sometimes dip out of. And we always, you know, at the end of the project, we always find ourselves trying to get it back because we have to explain that to the client or the professor in this case. Um, I, I think my colleagues, what they bring is uh, a good solution to an urban design problem. And they also bring a level of reality that, that leads you a little bit.